Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Scott Hambrick. That's Matt Reynolds. He he'll in my heart, he'll always be patient number one. <laughs> it's been a rough it's been a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so Ma- Ma- Matt's yeah. been ill, everybody. I don't know if he wants to just start talking. Uh, he went to uh, went to a conference and had been traveling around and been in a bunch of uh, our major airports and gets home, isn't feeling well. Hey, and go from there, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I traveled uh, extensively domestically at the end of February and early March. And um, about five days after that domestic travel, I started to uh, I started running a a pretty good fever, uh, 101, 102, and had really intense chills and and crazy body aches, like body aches like I've never felt mm. before, you know, like flu-like body aches where just everything hurt. And um, and this was really, you know, that it wasn't, it was certainly on some of the radars, but it wasn't really on our radar yet, the, the coronavirus issue. And so um, I continued to run fever, and, and that was really the the bulk of the, symptoms for me was a was just a moderate fever and and chills and and body aches and the body aches kind of stayed all along and the chills and the fever kind of waxed and waned a little bit um that started on march 5th and um by by nine days into it um of course by that time it was on everybody's radar and i was pushing pretty hard to get tested and um well and first, of course there were no the there first were no tests. Uh, the way you texted texted it to me because we weren't talking because I didn't want to get the Chinese AIDS through my phone. Right, of course. Uh, you, you said that you had called your physician, and he had kind of run through a little checklist with you and said, ah, you may have it, we don't know, but don't come in unless it takes a turn for the worse. Is that right? That's that's correct. So I had to do, um, I have both concierge medicine and, and had had worked with my doctor there, and he was monitoring things, and then also local, uh, one of the local hospital groups, they had set up a... Um, what is it? What are we doing now? <laughs> a uh, virtual visit, they call it. Mm. They had set up virtual visits, and uh, and so I, I literally talked to a doctor, uh, a lady, and she said, "Boy, all your symptoms are right in line." And by that time, I had started to develop the sort of the respiratory cough, and it it felt like tightness behind my my breastbone. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like bronchitis or or like goo in my lungs as much as it just felt like it was hard to take a full breath in. I wasn't really short of breath yet. Um, I just had developed this dry cough yeah. as well. And then How I, and, can you tell you know, when you're short of breath? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, yeah, I know, right? And so, uh, so anyway, she she said uh, this was this would have been on um, like Wednesday of last week, so about the eleventh. Um, I was talking to her, and then did another call again with her on the on the twelfth. And said, listen, my fever has spiked to 102 and a half. The cough is worse. I know that's this is what this is. I, I, I'm sorry, but I just, you know, like I'm not, I'm not a drama queen here. I, like I know this is what this is. And it's just, you know, I got to figure out. I'd like to at least be tested for the flu to see if we can rule that out. And she said, you know, yeah, you need to get tested at least for the flu and rule all that stuff out. She said uh, at the time, this is back on the 11th, so a week ago, she, um, the, the, there were just no tests and the CDC would basically wouldn't test you unless you were over 60 or in the ICU. And so, um, so she wanted me to come into the, to urgent care, which is right next to the, to the ER here, the major hospital group. And uh, she said, just go in and tell them that you have flu like symptoms and stuff. And I said, wait, whoa, I said, I've got, I'm pretty sure I have this thing. You want me to walk into a busy urgent care and potentially infect everyone? And she said, that they will not see you if you even say the words coronavirus. If you, you have to tell them you have flu-like symptoms. And so I, I, you know, I was like, look, this is not, that's not responsible. So I, I called the urgent care and said, look, I'm being referred by my doctor so-and-so to come in. I have flu-like symptoms. I've been told I'm not supposed to say the magic words, but I, I'm worried about coming in there and sitting in the waiting room with all of these people and potentially infecting them. And they said, thank you so much for calling. Oh, you know what? Your doctor's calling right now. So they coordinated and, and they said, come on up. 
And I got there and they had completely cleared the waiting room. I mean, it was like, and they said there were, you know, long waits. Of course, everything's over, just they're overbooked like crazy. So I got there and I mean, that waiting room, there was not a soul in there. I walked in, they knew it was me. They stuck a mask on my face and they took me back to a private room. And that started the, uh, they started the testing. They poked and prodded me and, and did the flu test, which comes back pretty quick and it came back negative. They, um, they, you know, they tested me for every possible disease that wasn't COVID-19 and they all came back negative. They tested me for sepsis. I mean, all sorts of random stuff to, to hope that something came, came up positive. And, and late that night, that'd have been a th Thursday th or Friday night. They, uh, the doctor came in, a lady, and said, uh, you know, I, normally this is good news, but she said, uh, you tested negative for everything, uh, for flu and everything. So she said, we're going to have to do the, the COVID-19 test. And she goes, I'm pretty sure that's, that's what it is. And so for those of you guys that don't know, I'm sure some of our listeners have been tested at this point. It is not a pleasant test. Um, it is basically like a, a, a long pipe cleaner, um, but not like a soft pipe cleaner, like a, a metal or plastic hard pipe cleaner and they stick a they stick one of those pipe cleaners down the back of your throat and swab the back of your throat till you you gag and i mean for a while and that's the best part then then they take another one of these same swabs these long like maybe six to eight inch swabs and stick it down each nostril until it chokes you in the back of your throat it's bizarre and they they're twisting it the whole time and so uh, so they do this test and they break off the stick and they put it in the a little vial and get ready to send it off. Well, I thought that was a done deal and they were going to get tested. Well, then, then they went into about 24 hours of fighting with the CDC to even get the thing tested. And they were like, look, this guy has tested negative. The hospital was great. They treated me great, but they said that this, the, our patient is negative for everything. He's shows all of the symptoms he's got, he's got, <laughs> they, they did an x-ray on my lungs. My lungs had massive amounts of opacities um, just look like it, it looked like a Doppler radar of in like a Midwestern thunderstorm. Well, to be fair, again, we need to see, we need to see one from, uh, you know, late last year. Cause that's, that may just be what they look like. It could be, except I don't smoke or have any reason to have screwed up lungs, you know? And so it's, uh, anyway, so they, the lungs look bad. Um, they actually ended up admitting me into the hospital with double, double pneumonia at the time. And what is now we know is double viral pneumonia. And, um, uh, and so they came in the next day They kept me overnight at the hospital, came in the next day and said, we got bad news. Um, the, it, the CDC isn't working on the weekend. The lab isn't open We're it's very important that the CDC doesn't have, they need to let their workers go home and rest too. And so the tests that we took yesterday, so there's very few tests out there. The, of the few tests that we have. Uh, the one we took yesterday is going to expire before the lab is able to test it. So we have to come in and swab the back of your nose and throat and stuff again. So, yeah. so they used two tests on me, threw one of them in the trash, and then uh, sent it off to the CDC. And even, even then, it was a little bit of a fight to get it. And so um, Monday morning, uh, the 16th officially came back as positive for uh, COVID-19. So I have it. And then, um, you know, it was just a myriad of phone calls with... The CDC called me over and over again. They actually apologized profusely for the lack of testing and, and uh, governor's office give, on the phone. Give me their number. I need to talk to them. It's crazy, right? Give me their it's number. Crazy. I need to talk to them. They're, com they're yeah. completely ineffective. Yes. Well, and the crazy thing is, is that, you know, now, um, you know, even when this thing comes out tomorrow on Thursday, um, the, the testing has ramped up dramatically finally just in the last few days, which means in the test. So, so of course, when I tested positive, I had to, I, I talked to the CDC a bunch, who all did I infect? And of course I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I'm, uh, the, the pneumonia has been difficult to, to say the least. Um, they ended up sending me home after a couple of days in the hospital, doped up on antibiotics and, uh, both, both gave me tons of IV antibiotics and, and oral antibiotics at home. Um, of course, then they tested my, my wife and kids, um, and on Monday, they set up a drive-through test, and they came and drive. But but it's a slow test, so I I didn't realize there are several different types of these coronavirus tests because of my symptoms. Because I was admitted in the hospital, they gave me the fast test, so I got the results back in like twenty four hours. But for my wife and kids, it's a three to four day process, so we haven't heard back yet. Now they're not they don't show any symptoms, um, so I think they're okay. You know, my my concern is I I I exposed a lot of people at my church. I didn't. Uh, 
I didn't feel very good. I didn't think it was coronavirus at all, obviously. Uh, but I sort of kept my distance that day and uh, didn't shake people's hands and didn't go get coffee or bagels or anything like that. And so um, I trained Sybil once during that that period. I'm, I'm concerned for her, obviously, and uh, and just my family in general. And so it's a it's been a it's been a difficult two weeks. It's not um, it's not the worst sickness I've ever had in my life. But I tell you what, man, 14 days is a long time to have a fever. And uh, I've never had pneumonia. Um, and so now the shortness of breath is pretty intense, just walking up the stairs or which I, I and of course, I'm in isolation. Uh, this is the first I mean, I haven't been downstairs. I'm downstairs to record this now, but I'm in isolation in the guest room away from my family. Um, can't really see them. And, uh, you know, doing have my laptop in the guest room and and they just it's like I'm a prisoner. They come and open up the door and they slide the food into me. Good. And, and, uh, and that, yeah, it's as it should be. And so, um, so that's, that's what it is. So, so I'm sure there's going to be people who are concerned. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm young and healthy and strong. This is why we train right for these sorts of things. Well, um, you're not young. It doesn't mean that, well, I'm young ish. I'm not 60. I'm not 84. I'm not Sybil. That's for not sure. 84. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll be okay. I was never really concerned that I wasn't going to be able to beat this. It was more about once I knew that I had it, you know, kind of going through the the shame and embarrassment of who who have I potentially put at risk, you know, before I had any idea that this is what I had. And so um, so that's it, man. Um, I, it's, I think looking back, um, I think a lot of, I mean, we're going to have a lot of people get it. And I'm, I may be lucky that I got it so early that, you know, they, they assigned a a nurse um, in each shift at the hospital just to me and they wouldn't let the nurse deal with anybody else and she mm-hmm. of course everybody in the hospital were like in full hazmat suits it felt like et remember et even grown up and it was like i was like et and there's all these people <laughs> all these people in like yellow suits and face masks and i mean literally covered head to toe and, and looking at me and poking me and prodding me and um but i but i got really good i got really good uh service and was taken care of at the hospital but my, my worry is in another in another few weeks there's there's going to not be enough hospital beds there's a hospital bed for me and there were people that were, could take care of me because i was so early so uh you gotta watch yourself out there matt reynolds patient number what you're like uh, right after you number t- right if you told me you th- had it i heard on the news like missouri has two patients like i know half of those yeah. guys yeah 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 i was officially number three. Oh, number uh, three and uh yeah, and it was weird. You know, they did a bunch of press conferences on me. Of course, you know, like the health department here did a press conference about me, and the governor talked about me on his press conference, and they had a city council meeting about me. And, and of course, all those were – you could watch them. And so it was super weird. You should have gone and to they that were, city council meeting. <laughs> you know, it's bizarre. And then, of course, it's uh, it's, it's lucky that it happens to me because I've done this long enough and been in the public eye long enough that I just don't care about trolls. But – it is amazing the comments that people leave, you know, like on the local NBC affiliate about, you know, who is this person and how to, how could they infect everyone? And, and is this, is this even a real human or is this a conspiracy theory? And no one actually has it. And it's, uh, you know, and you just, you just have to scan over them, but it's, uh, it's all right. So, yeah. so there you go. I've Matt Reynolds, owner of Barbell Logic, <laughs> has Ch- uh, Chinese early, AIDS victim early uh, Wuhan virus for me. So yeah, I'm okay. I, I feel like I turned a corner the last 48 hours or so for the better. The the pneumonia is definitely still is the worst part. Uh, the fever's down around 99, so it's low n- now. It's um, But 99 is actually kind of high for me. I'm one of those guys that in spite of being a radiating ball of heat all the time, when I take my temperature, it tends to be, I'm one of those guys that's like 97.5. Right. And so 99 feels like temperature. It feels like a fever. Uh, but it doesn't feel when I went into the hospital and checked in the other day, I was at one Oh two eight and that was pretty, that's hot. That's for me. That's, that's uncomfortable. And so, um, yeah, man. So we're just, we're just trying to hunker down do the best we can. You know, here's what I'll say. Um, isolation for us is not that hard. You know, we, right. we, I run an online business from home and I'm incredibly blessed to do so. And, um, you know, we get to work with our clients who most of whom have home gyms and if they don't, you should get one. Uh, or start to acquire whatever whatever equipment you can. Uh, we homeschool our kids. My wife's a stay at home mom. We've got probably you know eighteen months of food in the house and hundreds of pounds of meat in the deep freezer. And so it's just not it's we're, it's not that difficult for us to to isolate. Um, it's been kind of hard being in the in the guest room apart, not even being able to see my wife and kids for a week. That part sucked, but um, but I'm I'm fine and I'll I'll be fine. And so. Um, 
you know, we're just trying to take things one day at a time like everybody else is, I guess, and watch the world unravel. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's look at oil prices. Yeah, when, when uh, the first, you t- you t- <laughs> Matt texts me, and when he texts me, I always hear, when I read the text, they're always in Matt's voice. He's like, bro, bro, I got COVID. <laughs> That's what I saw on the, I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, and I was like, we got to do a podcast right now. I know. Scott, <laughs> Scott texted me while I was in the hospital bed, linked up to all this hoses and shit. And Scott's like, can you do a call right now and let's talk about it? And I was like, bro, I'm not, <laughs> bro, I'm not, good, I'm not in good shape. <laughs> all the so texts are in my, your voice. Bro, I can't do it right now. Well, uh, this morning, right now here, it's a uh, Wednesday, the 18th of uh, 2020, March 18th. Um, West Texas Intermediate crude oil. Yeah, this is an unrelated thing, but not really. It is twenty six dollars and ninety five cents. Well, that's, that's not unrelated at all to to COVID, right? Well, the Saudis are like flooding the market with oil, trying to put the put the hurting on Russian sure. oil industry there, and um, and but at the same them. time, like demand is incredibly low, right? Because there's no planes yeah. flying, there's nobody's driving in their car, so. Demand's low. The stock market's down this morning, right at about thirty-three percent so far in yeah. the free fall. So it's it's basically down a third since it's since it's high since it's high several three four weeks ago. Yeah. Um, um, the, the oil thing, you know, before this COVID stuff, I've been seeing this coming. By the way, uh, before this COVID thing hit, um, oil was at thirty-three bucks a barrel, so it was already way way low. Way. Too, way too low, by the way. way. It shouldn't be that low. low. No, yeah. no, no, no oil production company in the United States or exploration company in the United States can operate with this. Yeah, it's bad. Know. It's bad for the economy in general to have it that low. And yeah. now it's dropped another thirty uh, percent. Adjusted for inflation, um, it was uh, it was like this back around the internet crash, in nineteen ninety nine. Um, but then prior to that little dip, it hadn't been this low since 1973 inflation yeah. adjusted. And it's just going to go down, down, down. I think it's going to go down some more, uh, insanity. And then of course the stock market is, uh, uh getting beat up real bad. Well, it's crazy too, because it's, it's, you know, things are just nuts in the, in the financial world because, like everything's down, right? So stocks are down, but also gold and bonds are down. Yeah, Bitcoin's and, down. It's you know, so it's weird that the stuff that typically um, are sort of the antagonists of each other, uh, when one goes down, the other one goes up. Everything's down. Yeah, right it's now. it's worse than weird. It's um, impossible. Yeah, for people to be talking about a pandemic and uh, the stock market to be so low and gold and Bitcoin to be down. Yeah. Super. Hmm. Super. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that is queer, uh, but we're down about th- we're, yeah we're down thirty percent from uh, thirty point seven three percent from the peak. I think we got another thirty five points to go. Right. I think so. so I'm buying. Enjoy I'm buying that discounted rates. I mean, I realize I'm probably going to continue to lose money for a while, but it's it's not going to stay there. You no, know? but it's yeah. going to be a while for we're going to keep we're going to keep on legging down. I think. I'm I'm con- I'm concerned for sure. I'm concerned. We've we've had a lot of discussion about how to take care of our clients at Barbell Logic, and you know there, there's a kind of certainly I think we're in a, we're lucky because we're an online coaching business and a bunch of our clients train at home, which is good. Um, but uh, you know, so so the first kind of round of of potential issues I see are, are people who um, whose gyms close, which I mean, just about every gym in the country is closed at this point if they yep. don't have a place to train then that becomes difficult. So, you know, we've continued to try to provide support and, and value to them by, by being able to, to lay out home, home gym workouts, like body weight workouts and things like that to get them through the, through this time period. Um, you know, I, I certainly hope we ought to be able to provide value for people there. Uh, and that, that worries me less, I think, than um, the, the massive influx of what is going to be um, tremendous amounts of probably of layoffs. Um, I mean, there's no, no, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if Tulsa's Springfield's on lockdown. So as of last night, every restaurant in town is closed. Um, you know, every, every, everywhere's closed. That, that's mandated. Every, so and you've got all these people who, I mean, you and I have talked about it many times who, who are, they're so bad with money. They, they live paycheck to paycheck and, and really even day to day. And it's amazing the number of businesses that do this. Uh, you know, restaurants operate on such a low margin that restaurants are selling off their wine stock 
to, yep. to make cash, and um, it, which is great. That'll give them a nice little bolster for four days, and then they're in trouble. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. I'm worried about providing value to our, to our customers and how to do that if they're, they're laid off. And then, of course, you, you know, I think there's a bunch more people who are going to get sick. And uh, as somebody who's got this and got this viral pneumonia, dude, you cannot – I'm not going to train. I can't train for a while. It's been – you know, I've been sick for two weeks. I, I trained exactly two weeks ago. And uh, then started getting, and I was fine, and then started getting sick. And, uh, you know, I, I can't hardly go up the stairs. Yeah. Short, short breath, and I start hacking and coughing, and, and uh, it's going to be a while. And so I, I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, so we're, we're hunkering down and doing what we can, and, and uh, that's all you can do. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's, uh, I can't help it. I, I've been sick. I've been sick for like a, I don't know, a month. I think I've had the flu. Yeah, the actual flu. Yeah, yeah, and it never really just like laid me out, took me out completely. But I've just been miserable. And uh, you kind of social distance pretty much a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, anyway, it's a delight so. for me. You know, th- this is awesome. I, I just love watching everything. You know, I don't want anybody to get hurt, but I love watching it all. It's all a big experiment. Sure. You know, and. uh you know, extroverts are just a pain in everybody's ass, you know, but when times are good and the sun's out, they're out like introducing themselves to everybody and screwing and reproducing and all that. You're like, well, how do introverts even happen? Well, when the plague comes through, they just shelter in place and have a baby boom and all the extroverts are outside shaking hands with everybody like, like assholes <laughs> and, and then dying. they're dead. Right. Right. So Matt's like, yeah, I'll go do that conference. I will do no public speaking anywhere for anybody <laughs> right. ever. Uh, I had a guy, I had a guy, uh, a friend, uh, invite me to this great books conference in Toronto. He's like, we'll pay. We'd love to have you. I'm like, no, thanks. He's, he's like, no, we'll pay. I said, no, you don't, you don't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So. And so I avoided the Atlanta Hartsfield airport and uh, did go. not get the lung, the, the bat flu. No, that's good. Uh, well, so there you go, everybody. Yeah. A little catch, a little, uh, checkup. Glad you're doing better. And the yeah, last thank time you. The la- we actually haven't spoken because you couldn't, you were just getting these like yeah. 10 minute coughing fits to just almost black yeah. out. So yep. I'm glad. I'm I had glad a pretty you're good one better. this morning. I tell you what, the, the shower and, and then brushing mm. my teeth is tough because it, it you know, it, it kind of gags me to brush my teeth. And then it's, there's the combination, especially uh. if I shower and then brush my teeth, it's like the combination of like the moving around and the steam and it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult. Listen, listen uh, video yourself brushing your teeth and upload yeah. that to True Coach, and I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give you a form feedback. You me You're a not form, supposed form to check. gag. I'm a little, I'm a little vigorous on. Uh, I've been told I'm, I'm a wondering. vigorous toothbrusher. When you brush yeah, your teeth, to... do you put your left hand on the back of your head? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, yeah, I've got you know, I've got one of those. I don't know what are they. What's the, what's the real good? Do you have the electric... Sonicare one. Yeah, the Sonicare toothbrush. Which you know, I think you're just supposed to basically lay that thing on your teeth, and it just it just yeah, vibrates it's like an all the stuff sander. away. You just but I just it. but I <laughs> but instead I use it like a jackhammer. I turn it on and then jackhammer <laughs> everything, <laughs> including my tonsils. And so you know, I got to get the COVID out of there. Reminds you of church so. camp. <laughs> it doesn't remind me of <laughs> oh. church camp. It's so bad. It's so well, bad. hey everybody, stay at home. Use this as an opportunity to get back to basics. Right, get your old guitar out. You hadn't been playing. You've been meaning to work on a little bit and practice guitar, play cards to your damn kids, you know? Uh, and then uh, let's all use this. Let's all use this to uh, change the social order. Like if you can work from home for two weeks, tell the boss you don't need to go back ever. I mean, just yeah. keep on working from home. You know, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can undo some of this stuff. There's a whole lot of debt that's going to get undone. Uh, yep. There's a Jubilee coming, whether there they may do be. it legally I or not. Right. Oh, hey, there ain't no maybe. No, it's, it's just what it's just whether it's granted by the government or not, right? Like if yeah. if if uh, I just I looked the other day. You don't day. have a job and you got debt. You're not paying it. It ain't gonna get paid. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, uh, and we don't have a debtor's prison anymore. They might reinstitute that, but uh, you know, if it doesn't get paid, it doesn't get paid. It's a de facto jubilee. So anyway, I think I'll. I, this I hope coming. that the deposits you and I have made in our in our. I've thought about this a lot in our what little social circle niche that we have here uh, boy you you know we take some shit from people about our sort of midwestern value lifestyle of of saving money and having no debt and and money in the bank and yeah. homeschooling our kids and stay at home i tell you what looks pretty like pretty good lifestyle right now doesn't it oh it and always uh, has a bunch of retards want to you know just 
Well, and, I, and it's just and I, it's such a so, basic thing, you know. But there's two ways to look at it. There's certainly there's the group of people that give a shit about it, but I think there's there's a whole bunch of people that have taken some of that advice uh, to heart. Clearly, and so you know, hopefully you're sitting there on some, you've got money in the bank and and you've got some gold in the safe and you've got food in the freezer, and uh, you know you've learned how to live life uh, without being entirely uh, relying on on the outside world for that yeah. stuff. And, and so, you know, and, and, and release from the, the tyranny of the paycheck to paycheck thing, you know, oh, man. we got to, uh, I think this is going to point out to people, I think it's going to be like a watershed moment, you know, like September 11th is kind of like that. It was, you know, yeah. sure. Uh, and I think, I think this is going to actually replace it. I think people are going to say, well, before Reynolds yep. got the China flu and then after, yeah. or our kids will talk, you know, I was talking to my brother about it. There's, there's, our kids are going to talk about it. Like, like our great grandparents talked about the great depression. They're going to tell their grandkids what it was like to live through this thing. Uh, I really believe that. I mean, this is a this is a major event, and uh, it's not going to be over anytime soon. So, ah, ten more months of stock market decline. Nine to ten more months of stock market decline. I'm thinking. And uh, boy, I hope uh, not. So, I hope you're yeah. wrong. I realize you're probably right, but I hope you're wrong. Yeah, I hope I'm. Well, actually, I don't hope I'm wrong. I don't care. It needs to go where it's going. Sure. September. Well, the the internet. Well, September 11th uh, was September 11th. Sure, and then the 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 S and P five hundred bottomed out in March. After that, yeah, yeah. Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers went bankrupt in September of oh eight. The 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 uh, S and P five hundred ended up down fifty seven points uh, in March. Seven months after that, right? Uh, I think this is this is way worse economically than either of those events, and. Yep. Uh, it's going to take a little longer for it to fall out. I've got a I've got a normie friend. He's like, oh, you know, if this clears up by summer, it's not you know there won't be any trouble with the stock market. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> no, there's it, it's uh it's going to keep going down. I think, and uh, it, it takes it takes a number of months for the for the uh, the stock market to hit the bottom. But the stock market's the least of it. You know, it's all the people that are paycheck to paycheck are going to lose their That's cars right. and their houses right. and uh, and and who get sick and everything. So yeah, hey, train you you guys are all at home. You have no excuse not to train unless you're sick like me. Uh, but if you're not sick, train. Train with your wife and kids. You know, hope make homemade meals at home. Like, what a great, you know, this, this, read books. I like, know. It's not back to basics. Bad life. Back to basics. Back yeah, to I basics. think it's, it's, a, it's a good, I think it's a good it's opportunity a to, to re- reevaluate everything we do. Sure. Well, I'm glad you're well, Matt Reynolds. I hope all of our listeners, except for the ones that leave me shitty emails, do well. I hope. All the other listeners, man, I hope you all stay well and um, and let us know uh, let us know what you're doing in the home gym and send your questions to questions at barbell logic dot com and we'll answer those on a future show. Thank you all. Thanks, guys.